God is good. This message today is going to be a very simple, easy to understand message. We're going to do a little bit of reading. We're going to do a little bit of reading in a couple of different places. We're going to get the reading out of the way so that we can get into our message. And uh, I just pray that the Lord be in it, that He be over it, that it'll be it'll be words that will be from Him. And that's what we need today. We need His message. And I pray that uh, the ones that was intended to hear it will hear it. In one way or another. Even if it's by video or any other way that it could be listened to. Um, if you got your Bible, now like I say, we are going to turn to a couple of different places. So I don't expect you to to go and find them because we're going to be moving around a little bit. In Isaiah 29, in verse 15, it says this, Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. Meaning you can't hide nothing from the Lord. And their works are in the dark. And they say, the people now says, who seeth us? Who seeth us? And who knoweth us? Well, let me tell you that he sees us and knows us. He knows us better than we think that he does. And he sees all. Uh, I'm going to flip over to Isaiah 64. Isaiah 64 and verse 6 through 8. It says here, But we are all as unclean thing. I wouldn't have wore a shirt that would have been filthy. Now, this dark shirt wouldn't have showed dirt very easily because it's so dark. But I certainly wouldn't have wore a shirt that would have been a light color and it would have been a big black stain on the shirt. But if I would have wore something in here with this color, it would have been a little hard for you to be able to see the, the dirty stain that would be on the, on the shirt. He says here, but we are all as an unclean thing. And all of our righteousness are as filthy rags. I cleaned up my vehicle the other day and I got me some armor all to put on my dash. And I want you to know that that white rag that I used turned into a filthy rag. Because there was so much filth and dirt on the dash that it turned into a filthy rag. He says, our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Verse number 7 says, There is none that calleth upon thy name, that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee, for thou hast hid thy face from us, thou hast consumed us because of our iniquities. But then the last verse, but now, O Lord, thou art our Father. Now are you listening now? Are we really going to tune in to what the Bible is really trying to tell us right here? He says here, but now, O Lord, thou art our Father. Not everybody can say that, by the way. We are the clay, and thou art the potter. And we all are the work of thy hands. Well, let me tell you, not every one of us are the work of his hands. Now, we, are, we fit into his making, but that doesn't mean that we know him. We can only know Him in salvation. Without salvation, 
God might have created us, but do we really know Him? Do we know Him in the way that He wants us to know Him? If you turn over to the book of Psalm 139, Psalm 139, In verse number 13 it says this, For thou hast possessed my reins, I remember speaking on this a couple weeks ago, thou hast possessed my reins, meaning the inside of us, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb, meaning when I was growing up, I was covered in the, in the womb, I will praise the that listen Norman now this might help a little bit I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous are the works of thy hands let's see the works or thy works and that my soul knoweth right well my substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest part of the earth. Now he knows where we all came from. He knows where you came from. He knows where Adam came from. The Bible says that Adam came from the dust of the earth. Eve was created with the rib of the man. The man was created first. The Bible says that man needed a helpmate. And God created Eve from the rib of the man. So God has an order of how he wants things done. We can't break that order as much as maybe we would like to. But we can't break that order because the Bible is very clear in what it says. Now, if you... Flip over, if you are looking and want to look at where I'm at now, I am at Jeremiah 18. Jeremiah 18. This sort of witnesses to the verses that we just got finished using. Jeremiah 18, we're looking at 1 through 6. So if you do find it, then we'll probably stay here for a few minutes until we get done with this. It says, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying... Now this is the Lord's word from Jeremiah that the Lord was speaking to Jeremiah. This is the word of the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house. Now what is the potter's house? It's the place of where the clay is molded into position. That's a potter's house. A potter's house can end up being nasty and dirty and filthy. And because you got clay to deal with and you got splatter of water and you got all kinds of things that could be going on in the potter's house. But go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my word. So Jeremiah had to go to the potter's house to be able to hear what thus saith the Lord. Then I went down to the potter's house. That means that Jeremiah obeyed and went to the potter's house. And behold, a wrought a work on the wheels. Now you notice that it said the wheels. There was more than one wheel. A wheel is when you take raw clay and you lay it on the wheel and as the wheel spins, the potter's hands holds both sides of the clay. Not just one side. It takes both hands to form anything. It takes two hands to be able to form it in the object that it's supposed to be. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred. What does that mean? It had 
a problem in the inside of the clay. A marring of the clay. We're going to get to that in just a minute. So he made it again. He made the clay again, meaning he put it on the wheel again. Because the potter wasn't happy with the, what he was making. Because there was something that was inside. We're going to go over that. So he made it again, another <clears throat> vessel. Not the same vessel. He used the same clay, but he made a different vessel. As seemed good to the potter to make it. Guess what? The clay didn't have a voice. The clay couldn't go and say, God, I don't want you making me this. I want you to make me this over here. No, the clay, as far as I know, never has a voice. The clay can't go and tell the potter what to do. Neither can you and I tell God what he's going to do. It's very simple. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel. Now who's he talking to? The church? The people? The believers? The people that know him? O house of Israel? Cannot I do with you as this potter? He's basically saying, Don't I have a right to do with you being as I'm the potter of your life and you're going to tell me what I'm going to do? And he says right here, Cannot I do with you as the pot as this potter saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand. So are you in my hand, O house of Israel. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation? and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy. See, the potter has the ability to do all the work. Now, I'm going to ask somebody to do something for me. Norma, I want you to just slide over a little bit. Just a little bit. Because I want her to see the demonstration that I've got. Okay, so that's the only reason I asked you to move over. I've got a bunch of little stuff up here. And you can see that I'm going to lay the Bible aside. Because we've done read everything here on the scripture. I've got this little cut right here. I picked, I picked up this cup at my doctor's office. They had several of them. So I grabbed me a couple, two or three. I come home and I took the cup and I don't know if you can actually tell it or not but I marred this white area. You see how it's marred? Right here in the circle is a hole. There's a hole here. There's also a cut right here. It's broken. I took a pair of scissors and I stabbed it and I ripped it. Richard, if I was to pour water in this cup, it wouldn't hold the water. I could get to where the hole is and it wouldn't hold any water. This cup won't hold water. Remember the Bible talks about the living water. Remember that where the Bible talks about the living water? I could pour water in this cup. Gavin don't know this. What is this, Gavin? Huh? It's, it's your Play-Doh from your can. I'm using Gavin's Play-Doh. I could come up here and I can mash the clay 
however I want it to be. I could come up here and just keep moving it and moving it and moving it. I could even make it into like a snake by rolling it like this, but I can only go so far with it. And the reason I can only go so far is there's something inside this, and y'all don't know what it is yet. But there's something inside that is making the clay not conform. Even though I'm doing it, I'm trying to make it conform. But you know what? The clay can't conform until I take out the problem. Now see, I didn't plan this ahead of time. I've seen, Gavin knows what I'm doing. Because Gavin, don't you remember I hid some things in the clay before? Look at, look at what I got in the clay. I got a hard stone in the clay. And it's got darkness in the clay. And see, I couldn't have rolled out my clay with this stone in the middle. And we wonder why that we find it so hard to conform now when I'm able to squeeze the clay back again. There's nothing inside the clay because now I'm able to form it the way I want it to be. And what God does, God removes our unbelief. He takes out that unbelief. I got this little cross right here. Y'all see the cross? Little tiny little cross. What God does is when He begins to start forming everything back in us, He slides the cross into, into us when we come to know Him. If I didn't show y'all there's a cross in this, you would think that the clay would be empty because of the fact of the stone that was in the clay. But see, now... I've got the cross in me, meaning the picture of salvation. Salvation is taking hold. Let me give you another little demonstration. This was the living water that you put in the cup, Margaret. This is the place of where the cup is ripped. And the cup has a hole in it right here. So the hole won't allow the living water to go in. But there's a lot of times in our cup that we only look at the outside edge. We don't look at the inside edge. A lot of times we judge our cup based on what we think it's supposed to be in front of God. God sees the heart of each one of us. He also, Gavin, look at me. He also, Gavin hurt my finger last night, so it's going to be hard to do it. He also sees our cup raggedy. We don't get to see that because we think we're perfect in the way we are. God takes the old ragged cup that's got a bunch of problems in it. He looks inside the ragged cup and he sees this sin. This sin here blocks the cup. So he removes that out. Then he sees this sin of things that he don't want in our cup. And he takes it out. Then this is a picture of our righteousness that we think that okay we're saved and we're born again and we have our righteousness from God in us but here's what God does 
God begins to start unraveling our righteousness. And we get here. This is a sample of the dirty rag. And I cut this out because I didn't want to bring the old pair of drawers. I cut out a piece of it. Now, you know, we laugh at that, but see, we, we let this hide in our righteousness because we want people to see this. We don't want people to see the old broken down cup and the messed up cup. But see, God don't only just unravel us, He also unravels us all the way. And there's a piece that's even darker because we think that we've got it hidden and we've got it covered up. So see, all of this is in the cup that we don't want nobody to see so we stick it in there. We're all right in sticking the things that we don't want nobody to see. We put that back in there because it ain't nobody's business who sees it, Sheila. That ain't what the Bible said. The Bible said that God is able to see through us and in us. Remember when we read that? Here's another part that's black that we stick that back in there. And then, when we get saved, God sees us still as the clay. We're not changed just from the old man that is right there. We're still the clay. But what abides inside of the clay? The cross. You and I. So I can fit this back in. And, I, and you can't see it, but it's in the cup. But here's the thing. If I ever wanted to put water back in the cup, I got too much of me in here and not enough water. So what does God do? God removes a little bit of us, the part that He don't want. He also removes all of the black stuff that He doesn't want. He removes all of the junk that he doesn't want. And now the living water can go in. But guess what? If I was to open up this cup and dump the water, a broken cup ain't going to hold the water. My broken cup won't hold water. You know why? Does anybody know why? There's no bottom. And without Jesus, you're at the bottom. And there's no bottom. See, I can shove this through the cup, but it still was not going to hold water. So, here's what God does. God allows us to be the broken cup. We are the raggedy cup in the eyes of God. I'm trying to break it as much as I can. But see, who would ever want to drink out of this now? It's marred in dirt and filth. It's got a hole in the bottom of it. But can I tell you what God does? He does even better than that. Here's what God does. He takes your cup at salvation and He puts a brand new liner inside the cup. The outside is still the same. The outside is still marred. He then places the soul of man back into the new cup. Now the clay is at the bottom of the of the of the of the cup. 
Sheila, if I wanted to open up my living water and dump it in, guess what? It's able to hold water. Why? Because the cup of the Holy Spirit ain't broke. He still uses a broken vessel. I can put my living water into this cup. And here's what God does. He allows the living water to come into me and look how much the living water is in me when I'm not in the way. But here's what God does. At the time that He allows our spirit to be right here, what happens when the Lord comes and take His children home? At death, the cemetery is a witness. What does God do? He comes and He leaves the old man. See, He leaves the old man in the grave. It's laying down. The old man is laying down. God comes and gets the new cup and the new clay. And it takes it to glory with Him. All because of the liner that He puts in me. So that when I die and my life is over with, He comes and gets the new cup he changes the old clay with the cross inside. And some people might go and say, Well, Ken, we're always going, Norman, you're always going to be a sinner. People's going to remember the old Norma from 25, 30 years ago. And they're going to always throw that up in your face of the old person that we used to be. She lived the person that you was before you ever came to the Lord Jesus. And some people would say, oh, that Sheila, look how bad that Sheila was. You know what God does over a period of time? God puts a lot of her over the outside. So now, the world don't get to see the old Sheila. The world sees the new Sheila. But the old Sheila is still there. But the blood has been applied to the old Sheila. And the Holy Spirit is in the old Sheila with the cross inside. So I told you that today's message would be very short. And the verses that we read in the Bible explains what it means to truly be born again. I'm afraid that we got people that might be in this church that are still like this. Now is that my opinion? I'm just bringing out what if. What if there's somebody in here that never has experienced all they've ever experienced is this life right here. It's empty. It's ragged. The stone of unbelief. You see the blackness? The stone of unbelief is set in until Jesus removes the unbelief out of you. And that's what the blackness stands for. The little bit of tape I got on this rock. It's still inside. And we've got it all covered up nice and pretty. So Sheila, we don't want no one to see our, our rock. So see, we keep it covered up because nobody it's nobody's business what God does to me. I've got my life hidden. I've got my life where nobody can be able to see but you remember, this filthy rag is dirty. But this filthy rag is even worse. And see, we hide our filthy rag inside of our righteousness. 
and we keep it in our broke cup and then we try to put salvation in in the clay and it don't work and the cross that I put in my clay is non-effect there's no cross inside there can be no liner put in when you got your garbage on the inside of your cup does that make sense the cup won't allow a new cup with our old garbage he wants us to dump out the garbage allow him to come put the new cup put the new holy spirit inside and then over a period of time he allows the liner on the outside so guess what norma nobody's able to see all your sin that you did 30 years ago oh some people maybe will throw it in your face still of what norma used to be but in the eyes of god God puts a new liner on the outside and on the inside. I would have loved for him to have stayed because I think this could have explained the reason why people are the way they are. But you know what? I can't. I can't make anything happen. I can tell you this. I was this person for 48 years. I knew the church songs. Them songs up there, I sung them right here in this church, Sheila. I had my rock of unbelief covered up so perfectly. Nobody could ever see any of my problems because I had it disguised. I had it covered up. I just didn't have the cross inside of me. But you know, when God slides his liner on the inside, it makes all the difference in the world. Let him slide the liner in you and on outward of you. Let him put the cross inside you and value that cross. Because the time will come when the Lord says, you know what? I want Norma to come live with me in heaven. And God is willing to take the old clay of our life and breathe life into it. All because of salvation. Did I deserve Did I deserve the new liner inside me, Norma? Did I earn it? Did I work for it? Did I live good enough to get it? Did I live good enough to keep it, Sheila? But when the Holy Spirit comes in, He puts us in the new cup. There's no raggedness black, filthy, nasty dirt on them pieces of rags that I had. Just able to carry the living water too. And we wonder why people are so unhappy. I can tell you why. I can tell you why. Because they're trying to live a life in the old, the old raggedy life. And we wonder why we're not happy. We wonder why we're in content. Could it be that just maybe, it might just be that we're living that old life in the old cup, and we think that nobody knows? Can I tell you what I first read at the very beginning of this lesson? God knows. Didn't we read that? Didn't I read a verse in Isaiah that said that God knows? 
If he knows my outside, don't you think he knows my inside? Don't you think that he knows if the cross abides in my clay or not? Y'all seen me put it in there, didn't you? I'm grateful and I'm thankful that God put the new in me and He put the new on the outside of me. Now people might still judge the old outside and that's their right and I can't help what other people do. All I can tell you is I'm just glad that God allowed me to get the junk out so I could carry the living water with me. And God knows every one of us has got the cross inside our clay. So I just hope that maybe this might be good for all of us. Just a very simple, very easy to understand message. Anybody got a question? Anybody got a question? Father God, I thank you today for your goodness and mercy. God, I thank you today that you allowed the message to go forward even through a show and tell. Lord, I'm thankful, Lord, for the new liner of your Holy Spirit that you put inside of my raggedy cup. And Lord, that's exactly what you're trying to do to every one of us is allow us to see the broken vessel that we are. And Lord, help us today to see us as broken without you. Help us to visualize the things that you see inside of us. And help us, Lord, to have that devotional, Lord, like Margaret said, even in the Sunday school this morning, help us to realize that it's a personal relationship. It's the cross that is inside our clay. Help us, Lord, to just remember that you came to give us another cup to put inside of the broken cup, something that will hold the living water. And Lord, that we can have that new cup on the outside to be totally changed. Lord, you, you fixed the inside first. You didn't put the cup on the outside first. You put the cup on the inside because the inside is where the soul is. And help us, Lord, to value our soul as we stand before you one day. Help this message be a simple message. Thank you, Lord, for the day. Thank you for the people that are here, the ones that heard it now. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen.